Hi, this is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers I have. It's been really nice to have new people come. And so if you feel comfortable, you'd say hello in the comments. And if not, I'm just glad you're here. So the purpose of this video today is to talk about the things I've recently read and the things I plan to read in April that are in relation to a new booktube event called People April. So I will talk about that a little bit later. The first book I want to talk about is Best American Short Stories 2022, guest edited by Andrew Sean Greer, who wrote Less and Less is Lost. I haven't read Less is Lost yet, but I really enjoyed Less. It was a very, it was a comic, gay romance um, professor, coming, not, not coming of age, like coming of middle age, I guess. It's a middle age crisis novel. And I thought it was hilarious. So I'm still looking forward to reading the sequel, Less is Lost, but I haven't read that yet. Anyway, all's that to say, he was the guest editor of this Best American Short Stories anthology that I read every year. And I've been reading it with Teresa for three years now. And so we started it in January, reading one or two stories a week throughout the first quarter of the year. And yeah, it was just like all of the anthologies, there were some stories that we both wondered why it was this included because just they just weren't very good or they they might have been fine serviceable stories but they did not rise to the level of best American short stories and then there were also a couple of stories that surprised me because I normally don't like um, surreal stories or something that's not realistic and there so there was one called the Little Woman from the Capitol by Johanka Delgado, which I thought was really good. It was more of a, almost like a fairy tale or a folk tale about a woman who has all kinds of powers and she uses them against people when she is sewing. And uh, she moves to this apartment building and has this mad, tempestuous, quick romance marriage. And then, all, but it's told from the perspective of all of the people who live in the building. That was a really good story. There was a really good Lauren Groff story called The Wind, which was this harrowing story that was in the New Yorker about these children whose parents, the, the father is incredibly abusive and they're trying to escape from him. Um, and they have to go to the townspeople for help and what happens and it's told from the perspective of the far future looking back um there's a gish gen story called detective dog which is a covid story but also also about um, being immigrants in the united states during covid while a lot of things are happening in china and the protagonist of the story is kind of being challenged by her children to care more about the political situation in China. And she is very reticent for obvious reasons. And uh, it was funny, but it was also quite serious as well. And my favorite story is called Post, and it was by Alice McDermott. And this was a story about COVID, post-COVID, and the dis disintegration of a relationship, which I thought was a very good st story. I really enjoyed the narrative sense of the story and it was just one of my favorites. So, and there were several other very strong stories. So if you are the type of person who doesn't necessarily want to read a collection of short stories by the same author, then this might be something interesting if you want to find out, like uh, there's a nice variety of different types of stories, different authors, um, different perspectives. So you get, a little bit of everything and you are surely going to find something that you like in the collection. The next novel I want to talk about is Indelicacy by Amina Kane and this I heard about this story from other people I watch on booktube. It's a really short novel but it packs a, quite an impact. It's about a woman who as we start out the story she is a cleaner in a gallery and she spends a lot of time looking at the art in the gallery and you know being a janitor and eventually she meets a man who falls in love with her and wants to marry her and it turns out he's quite rich and so she leaves her life as a janitor in the gallery and and lives a life of leisure what she does with her time is try to observe 
and experience art and then write about it. She wants to be a writer. It doesn't seem like publication is really her goal. She doesn't really care, seem to care, at least in this narrative, she doesn't talk about what am I going to do with this manuscript. It's more about the act of writing. And so it's a practice and it's developing a talent and it's also honing in on her observation skills. Now she's not very happily married. She doesn't seem to really like her husband husband very much. And he's happy with her just doing her thing. They have a house cleaner maid who lives there and takes care of all their needs. And the main character tries to reach out to this housekeeper and befriend her and the housekeeper has wants nothing to do with her and is very disdain, disdainful of her and they have this almost feud that's like very passive aggressive and the other characters in the stories the story are other women who are involved in some way in either observing or participating in art. One is a dancer, one woman she befriends and they go to watch singing and another person from the gallery that she used to clean with, she reunites with. So all of the strong relationships she has in the book are with women and in regard to art. So there isn't a lot of plot. This isn't, yeah, there aren't twists and turns. Um, It's just more of a meditation on figuring out what we value, how to build a life that has meaning. It was really interesting. Um, I don't think I loved it quite as much as other people did, but I also thought it was a very strong and short novel that made me think about things like art and how I spend my time. Next, I would like to talk about Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Um, I have a weird experience with this book because I actually enjoyed reading it while I was reading it. The pro- you know, it was the prose is funny. The premise is very strong. So it's set in the 1950s, a woman who deeply, deeply loves chemistry and wants to be a chemist and all of her obstacles along the way. And then she falls madly in love with a chemist and then there's a tragedy. They have a baby and then there's a tragedy. So her name is Elizabeth and Elizabeth will not back down. She is determined to take control of her life and that's what it's about. So it's funny. But I also feel like it was a giant bowl of cotton candy and I ate it and I enjoyed eating it and then I didn't feel great afterward. Um, Especially because the novel itself turns out to be a very feminist fantasy. It's totally reimagining the 1950s. I mean, there were in real life obstacles for women in the 1950s, but this one just throws all caution to the wind. And it was just completely unrealistic. And um, and it got went, went off the rails as far as I'm concerned in terms of the plot and backstory and the way that little things that were woven in come together at the end. And I, um, I, I just felt frustrated by it by the end, although I enjoyed the experience and I'm looking forward to my book club discussion about it. But I just don't think it's a book that's serious. It's, it, it was a diversion, it was entertainment, but it wasn't to me, in my experience, a serious book. Okay, uh, now I want to talk about the novel that I liked the best out of everything I read recently, and that is Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. I read this as a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac, and we had really good conversations about the book. We read it in thirds, and as as we were going, we would check in and talk about what had happened so far and kind of trade back. Like there was a scene in a gallery where the main character, Kushla, is looking at this particular portrait and I'm going to put a picture of it here. And Sean sent that to me in the Voxer. And so we were talking back and forth about the critical or the cultural references that we saw. And so I really enjoyed my conversation with Sean about this. This is a bit of a divisive book, uh, I guess, you know, on BookTube. Um, some people really like it and some people didn't like it. Some people are kind of in the middle. I am one of the people that I love this book. I thought it was, it was everything I look for in a novel. It was... Um, the first thing I really liked about it, it was very set in a specific time and place. So you were in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, 
during the Troubles in the 1970s. And we have a girl who's 24. She's an Irish school teacher. And the Irish are being highly persecuted by the Protestants. And there's a lot of violence, bombings, and tension amongst the religious factions of the city and of the country. So she, her family owns a bar, so she teaches during the day and then she goes and helps her brother with bartending at night. And one night, a man who her father used to know and who is a Protestant, but he's a barrister and he is trying to get the government to not um, torture Catholic prisoners, comes in. He is married and her name is Kushla, his name is Michael, and they start having an affair. So right away, that's going to turn a lot of people off. But the relationships are so well talked about. Uh, They're complicated. They're complex. The characters are very imperfect, but they're just trying, they're grappling with the situation of their lives, the political situation, the religious situation, and the family's situation. So for this kind of novel really works well for me. I felt very, very invested in all of the characters. And, and Kushla has a mother named Gina who is an alcoholic, so she has to take care of her alcoholic parent. And her brother is very kind of bitter and mean towards her and her mother but there is a thread of love he's a complicated character he's rounded he is real Michael is also very appealing and very alluring as a man who's almost twice as old as Kushla but you can see why she's attracted to him and you can see why he is attracted to her and then Kushla's school children and a family that she gets involved in one of her students named Davy's family is brutally uh, affected by the violence uh, in that is going on in the city. So there are so many different pushes and pulls and tugs of the heart, and I just thought it was fabulous. And it really kicks into action in the second half. There's a build up to the first half, and then the second half, all the plot really starts roiling, and I thought it was really good. You could compare it to Milkman. Um, I think I liked Trespasses more than Milkman, and I loved Milkman, I thought, by Anna Burns. That was a very innovative way of talking about and showing the tensions that were happening, same time period, but a little bit different treatment of the topic. But Trespasses, to me, had more heart, and I I wanted the best for all of the characters, and I was I knew I was setting myself up for a huge uh, situation of being possibly disappointed in what happens. And so if you're like me and you like complicated, messy relationship novels, then you might really like Trespasses. Okay, well, that's what I've finished. What I'm currently, I'm currently reading quite a few books, and two of them are for People April, which is a booktube event that is new this year by Roz from Scally Dandling about the books, and Elizabeth at Boken Books. And I have linked their channels below, so if you want to see their announcement videos or what they are actually reading during this month, check them out. And so what you're supposed to do for People April is to read books about people. So we're not reading fiction, we're reading nonfiction. We are reading diaries or memoir or biography or anything that's actually about real people. And so I am reading, right now I'm reading two memoirs and I'm going to pick up a third when it becomes available next week. First one I'm reading is the Copenhagen Trilogy, Ova Diffletsen. I'm, I hope I said that right. Um, I'm going to put an actual image that's not reversed in my space up here. But this is the story. It takes place right after World War I. It's about where I'm at now as a little school schoolgirl when Tova is a little schoolgirl. So she lives with her father and mother and brother. Her father and mother don't get along well. Her father is unemployed and can't get a job. Her mother is quite cruel to her at times, but it's just the observations of a child. And then I believe the second would be her adolescence and maybe her third 
is like her early adulthood. So there are three volumes in this one trilogy, in this one bound volume. And I really like the writing. I, it feels earnest and she has quite an imagination and she's being thwarted by it all the time by the adults in her life. And so she's just figuring life out as far as I can see. And I'm just really uh, kind of enamored by the story. And the second memoir I'm reading right now is called Corrections in Ink. And this is quite different. This was a girl or a young girl or she w when she was in high school, she was a figure skater, but she was beset by quite a few problems like eating disorders and um, and then starting to t get into drugs. And that just derailed her um, ice skating career and she runs away. And so it's two, it's a dual timeline. It's talking about the things that happened to her when she was a teenager and then the reality of being thrown into prison. So right now she's in jail and we know she's going to go to prison for a long time because she was caught with a large amount of heroin. And she is a really good writer and she became a journalist after this and she became an advocacy journalist trying to make life better for prisoners after she gets out. So we know she eventually gets out and she uh, gets a life out of prison, but she is going into the nitty gritty of what prison life is like, what it feels like to be there when you're still on drugs and you still have access to drugs for the first uh, amount of time while you were waiting for your arraignment and and no one's contacting her she's lost touch with her parents for a long time and what the interactions with other prisoners are like and how they help each other kind of grapple with the system because the system clearly does not care about these people at all and does nothing to orient them to what's going to happen they're not allowed to have watches and so time is skewed and um, their lives are just really difficult, but they also form some form of community that helps them kind of figure out the system so far. So anyway, it's, I'm really enjoying that. The third memoir I plan to read this month is called You Could Make This Place Beautiful. Maggie Smith is a contemporary poet. You might remember having heard about Maggie Smith during, I think around 2016, one of her poems goes viral on the internet. It was called Good Bones. She, during that time, so she got kind of famous as a poet on the basis of that poem. And she was also going through a divorce at the same time. So this memoir is a divorce memoir. I'm always interested in that kind of what happens when relationships unravel type memoir. So I'm looking forward to that because she's a good writer and I want to see what her prose is like. So that's what's coming up for me. I, I also want to shout out two of my new favorite booktube channels. One is called Evening Reader and her, and her name is Priscilla and she just started a channel and she is caught on like wildfire. And the other one is, and the other one is Angelia at Read and Reread. And I'm going to link uh, their channels below. So any video they put out are interesting and you may want to, to please give them, you know, give them some attention because their videos are great. Angelia makes like two or three videos a week and she is so thorough and she also loves television. So I feel an affinity with her because as you know, I really love television too. So I like seeing what she's up to watching and Priscilla, I have been following on various social media over the years. We've followed each other and she, I was just very pleased and surprised to find out she had a booktube channel. So uh, I know she's been shouted out a few times already recently and you probably already are subscribed to her, but if not, please check out her video. So that is all I have for now. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you plan to be reading in April and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.